Sam in uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, one of the one of the prettiest uh, cemeteries in Massachusetts. Massachusetts has a lot of very beautiful cemeteries. This is not one of the most beautiful ones, but this is the home of the local, the burial grounds of the local witch, which is uh, Witch Bonnie. So here I am. I'm gonna go search for her and probably just show you uh, some beautiful tombs here in this cemetery in Lowell, Massachusetts. Every town in uh, New England and Massachusetts has its uh, local ghost stories, uh, local witches. It's not just uh, Salem, Massachusetts, but pretty much every uh, town in New England and in Massachusetts. And uh, the official witch of uh, my town is uh, Witch Bonnie. And so here I am, a nice uh, fall day. You can see the leaves are gorgeous. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful cemetery, beautiful burial ground. But here I am, I'm gonna go in search of her tombstone. The infamous Witch Bonnie of Lowell, Massachusetts, here in New England. Any cemetery ground uh, that has a cross or usually looks like this is sacred to either El Barón del Cementerio or Gedenimbo. In the Haitian voodoo tradition, the crossroads represents uh, that which meets uh, the realm of the living and the realm of the dead. I'm trying to get that tree out of my way. Is that a dead tree? Let's hope it's not hollow, because that's where which Bonnie's gonna come back. <laughs> that's one right here. Beautiful uh, tombstones here. I think that one's really beautiful. Looks like a scrying ball. It's very beautiful. Looks like a goddess. It's an angel, I think. Yeah, it's an angel. It's got the wings. Look at that. Look at how detailed, how beautiful that is. Very, very beautiful. It looks like a pagan goddess. Beautiful uh, Gamboa spirit dryad of the crossroads right there in the center of a three, three, four, actually, I'm sorry, crossroads. And there's a tree right here, very sacred. A sacred uh, spirit. And right there at the crossroads. Crossroads which represents uh, between the living and the dead and how we interact all the time. Very beautiful tree. Whenever I visit a town or a city, uh, anywhere in the United States, in Puerto Rico, I love to visit uh, cemeteries, uh, especially in the month of October, which is uh, the month of the witch, and November, which is the season of the dead. Uh, November is the season of the dead when things go back to sleep. And, it, you know, I love visiting cemeteries. I, I find them peaceful. I find them tranquil, especially here in New England where you can see all the, the foliage. It's, it's just beautiful. But it reminds you 
that life is short and that this is just a transition uh, from one realm of existence uh, to the next realm of existence. So whenever I visit a any town or, or any place, I really enjoy visiting their sacred ceremony, uh, cemeteries, uh, you know, because I just find them very beautiful. And I always come around October, which is the season of the witch in November, uh, the season of the dead, you know, the other muertos is November 2nd. So, uh, that's just, you know, it's usually the whole month of November that is the season of the dead in, in the American culture. Uh, now they're starting to celebrate, a. Uh, El Dia de los Muertos, which they only do it one day, but in Haitian voodoo and in Mexican traditions and in Latin traditions, it is the day, it is the whole month. November is the whole month of the dead. Eh, el mes de las ánimas, las ánimas benditas del purgatorio, uh, or El Dia de los Muertos, as some people call it. But I find tranquility in cemeteries. I think it's, it's just beautiful, and I, I, I enjoy it. I always find it very peaceful. I mean, can you believe this is in a cemetery? I think I always find it very peaceful and very beautiful uh, to visit cemeteries. You know, especially on, on this month, uh, when it's cool. I mean, look at this thing. It's very beautiful. People are buried here. And look at there's steps going out, and there's a walkway. It's very beautiful. I'm gonna take a picture of it so you can see it better. Beautiful that is. How pretty. Nice and wet too. Some of the New England color cemetery, which Bonnie, you know, very hard to find. <laughs> you got me going around in circles and circles, but I'm enjoying it. Beautiful day, quiet and peaceful. I've got all day. I'll find you. I'll find you. The critical thing that I would like to talk about is that the first governor of Puerto Rico was Juan Ponce de Leon. Juan Ponce de Leon, I think he governed Puerto Rico, I'm not sure how many years, uh, but he died in Florida while in search of uh, the Fountain of Youth by some Arawak Indian. So he was the first governor of Puerto Rico. Uh, the first American appointed governor of Puerto Rico was uh, Charles Herbert Allen, who was born and raised in Lowell, Massachusetts. I think he was born in April 15, 1848. Uh, he died April 20th, uh, 1934. A racist bastard. He was the first appointed governor. He was from Lowell. Uh, his tomb is here in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, he governed in Puerto Rico, I think 12 months. I'm not sure how long he governed Massachusetts, but his burial ground is here. Uh, a, racist, a racist bastard who governed uh, the island of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, after the Spanish-American War, Cuba won its independence while my island it went from the hands of one emperor, the king of Spain, to the hands of the United States and has been a colony of the United, St the United States since, what, 1898, I think it was. And so Charles uh, was the first governor appointed by the United States, uh, you know, appointed. The first one was Juan Ponce de Leon, uh, but he was from Bo uh, Lowell, Massachusetts, and he is buried in this uh, cemetery. So, you know, just a little Puerto Rican history. I just wanted to add that to the video. Isn't that funny how the trees kind of look alive? Imagine looking at this tree in the dead of night of a full moon. Now, look at the shape it takes. Imagine seeing that at night. Actually looks like an old man right here. Like a dryad, you can see his ears his nose, his mouth, so it looks like a dryad spirit, 
what uh, they are known in voodoo. It looks like the nose right here. You can see the nose, the mouth, the eyes, uh, the forehead, the ear, dryad. In voodoo, gramboa, grambois. I just had to zoom in because it really does look like a face looking that way. Uh, if it's facing that way, it looks like it's facing the east. Uh, so this dryad is facing uh, the east. Yeah, it looks like the east, or is it? No, I'm sorry, the south. He's facing the south. So you can see his eyes, his nose, his mouth, his forehead, somewhat his ear. Some of the trees, imagine seeing that at night. <sighs> I think it's very beautiful. I love cemeteries. You can hear the wind uh, blow through the trees. So I'm going up a hill, and I think this is a crypt. There's a couple of crypts in this cemetery. Oh, the air smells beautiful. It smells amazing right now. Okay, there's a crypt right there. Visit your local cemeteries and respect the cemetery. You have to respect the cemetery. Don't go in there vandalizing. Look at that, that's a beautiful crypt. That's some pretty ones in the cemetery. A little thirsty, but hells nah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. Some of these uh, tombs and gravestones are very, very beautiful. that one very beautiful look at that it's beautiful rainbow and here I am in the cemetery caught a beautiful rainbow how beautiful very powerful beautiful day I think I'm gonna be a lot of blessings a lot of abundance look at that beautiful rainbow beautiful day for me <laughs> thank God that I came to the cemetery you know to enjoy this day Get some exercise. This one right here, it looks like Santa Elena. Santa Elena de Jesus. Not sure, but it looks like it. Actually, it's an angel with a cross. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thought it was Santa Elena. The rainbow, just in case it didn't get it clearly enough. And yes, I'm in the cemetery. But look at that beautiful rainbow. Ah, uh, the camera doesn't do it justice. Hopefully I get it. For uh, which Barney, you have to find this lion, the centennial. Often, uh, which Barney, which is if you see her tomb is right here, uh, she's often her gaze is towards this lion. So, when you come to Lowell, Massachusetts, search for this uh, tomb. This is her centennial, her guardian. So, when you do come to Lowell, Massachusetts, if you're looking for the local witch here in Lowell, Massachusetts. Her tomb is right there, and she supposedly stares at uh, this centennial, the sentinella, this guardian. It is the tomb of the local witch here in my uh, town of New England. Uh, the burial grounds of Witch Bonnie. And I'm going to record it a little bit closer so you can see it. So here's the tomb of uh, Clara Bonnie Lilly, a, a local witch here in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, from what little I know, she was born in June 19, 1855, and died at the age of 39, uh, July 19, 1894. I think she was giving childbirth when she, uh, when she passed away, or when she died. So there is no local or historical historical records that uh, Claire uh, Bonnie Lilly was an actual witch. Some people say that she was one of the witches that uh, hung in Salem, which would probably be a folklore since she died in the 1800s and the witch trials 
in Salem were in the 1600s. There is no local proof as to, well, this is just local folklore of this statue. This is one of the most visited statues here in Lowell, Massachusetts. Often you will find uh, offerings right here, candles right here. A lot of pagans, a lot of witch uh, people who are witches uh, come here. A lot of people who do paranormal research here in Massachusetts often come to this statue uh, just to check on readings and stuff. But there is no uh, historical records on who was uh, Claire Bonnie Lily. And if, in fact, she was a witch, we don't know where uh, the history uh, started. But this is one of the most uh, important tombs, one of the most visited tombs here in my town of uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. It said that if you come on the night of a full moon, uh, her eyes will follow you wherever you go. And it, is, it says that every year her bonnet falls a little bit lower. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, there's an, also another legend that says that she will one day come back into life uh, you know, to take revenge of those who uh, persecuted her, who killed her. Come on the night of a full moon. This cemetery is very well protected. I'm surprised there's no candles. Here we are in October. Usually there's candles and coin offerings here. But it is said that her shawl or her dress falls every year a little bit lower. When it comes completely down, she is to be reborn in the hollow of a dead tree. Uh, now, whether a lot of people believe that folklore or not, you will never find a hollowed dead tree in this cemetery. Uh, but supposedly when the dress completely falls down uh, to her ankles, she will uh, be reborn, reborn to take revenge on the descendants of those who uh, persecuted her or who uh, killed her. So these are all local folklores. This is one of the most important uh, cemetery burial grounds here in my town of Lowell, Massachusetts. And this is Witch Bonnie. These are the names of these people who were buried here. And this right here, Clara Bonnie, is the one who we, who we know as uh, the witch, Witch Bonnie. And you can see when she was born and when she died, uh, she died at uh, giving childbirth. But I think she's buried here with her father and uh, I think her mother, I'm not sure, and her husband. This is the back of the, the tomb. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Look at that. You believe that? They were here. Do not enter. Guess where I'm going. Look like a hot mess. Um, I didn't realize the cemetery hour. Uh, you know, I read it. it I thought it said from so and so 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock p.m. and I was stuck in the cemetery so my I had a channel my 16 year old self and literally climb over a, a, a fence and uh, you can't see but I got some war wounds uh, can you imagine my old my old ass so then after I got out of the cemetery which was closed a I came across, you know, that part where you see that it's kind of open. I'm like, are you kidding me? So anyways, I went all the way around. Now, what, where we are right now is Shedd Park. Uh, and in 1999, uh, they found the body of a, a an 11-year-old girl. Her name was, I think her name was Tabitha Potter. And she was... Uh, murdered strangled and I'm not sure if she was raped I don't remember the case very well but I remember being around these areas with my friend one of my friends we used to like bike ride around here the cemetery is right in front of me but we used to bike ride here and she had got she went missing on I think it was on a Wednesday we were bike riding on that Thursday where we decided to sit on on these rocks but we were facing that way and I felt this presence I felt like something was staring at me and it, it felt very uncomfortable and I remember telling my friend oh, we need to get out of here it just doesn't feel right let's just go uh, so we did and um, 
The following day, I guess they had found her body. Uh, she had been strangled. Uh, there was uh, beer cans, um, I think cigarettes, I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't know if I was feeling the presence. Uh, that was 1999. I was like 28 years old. So we must have been, I must have been feeling the presence of her energy. The energy felt uncomfortable. It felt disorientated. And I remembered my friend was talking to me at that moment. And I remembered I, when, when I feel a presence, I kind of like zoom out. And uh, he knows, my friend Rafael knows that when, when I zoom out and you're talking to me, all he was like, you ever see Charlie Brown, you hear wah, wah, wah. That's what I was hearing because I felt that presence staring at us. And the presence was uh, very disorientated, very uncomfortable. So anyways, I told my friend, we need to get out of here. Something is watching us. Something feels uh, uncomfortable. So we got out of there, and the following day, they found her uh, behind me right here. She used to play, if you can see over here, there's a basketball field right there. That's where she used to play basketball. And they found her body around this area, I think. Uh, and that was in 1999. And uh, so I remember that. I remember that presence. It felt always very uncomfortable. And it's right in front, or actually right in back of the cemetery. Uh, where I just went to find which Bonnie. So I just wanted to add that uh, to this video. Late, I was stuck in the cemetery and I literally had to climb over one of these fences. It's getting late. I'm gonna get home. There's a chicken pot pie uh, with my name on it. So, but before anything, I want to let you know that as brujos, when we enter a cemetery, uh, we uh, leave an offering in the entrance, usually uh, nine coins and usually a guava in, in latin american countries we eat guava or berenjena berenjena is a eggplant and then we take a three turns around clockwise meaning that we're entering into the world of the spirit now when we leave the cemetery we often try to leave a different route and then we leave an offering at the cemetery at the gate and then we take a a I'm sorry, I'm exhausted. We leave a, um, we turn around uh, three times uh, the opposite way, you know? So when we enter, we enter and we make three circles clockwise and then counterclockwise. That's the word that I'm trying to say. Sorry, I'm exhausted. I haven't eaten all day. I needed to make it to the back of that cemetery, which is I'm almost heading there. I'm gonna leave some berenjena. Berenjena is eggplant uh, for the spirits as an offering. I'm going to leave them nine coins and head home because there's a chicken pot pie with my name on it. I'm exhausted, I'm hungry, and I'm tired, and it's getting late. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please leave a comment, uh, please subscribe, and please share on your favorite social media. This is Sancista Brujo Luis, Santo Sanse. Oof. Didn't pay attention to the hours and uh, I got locked in the cemetery. Uh, this is the back of the cemetery. So I had to climb over a fence. I had to channel my uh, 15, 16 year old self. I read eight o'clock, see right there, when in actuality, October 15, it closes at four. But anyways, when we enter the cemetery, we leave an offering of coins in berenjena or eggplants, and I leave coins. And when we enter the cemetery, uh, we do three, uh, it turns clockwise, meaning that we're entering into the world of spirit. And then when we leave the cemetery, uh, we leave an offering at the entrance or at the gate of the cemetery. Uh, you can leave guava. Uh, you can leave berenjena. Berenjena is eggplant in English. Uh, and when we leave the cemetery gates, uh, we should uh, go counterclockwise. Clockwise is we're entering into the ro world of the spirit and counterclockwise we're entering back into the world of the living. So I had to go all the way around just to definitely get out of this cemetery. It's getting pretty late so let me get home. Probably, I probably look like a hot mess. Uh, I spent uh, three, three and a half hours looking for Witch Barney in the cemetery. I finally found her. I got locked in the cemetery. I had to go over a fence. After I went over the fence, uh, I found that there was a, it looked like a car hit the fence and I could have gone right through there. But anyways, all for the love of my channel. I did this uh, with a lot of love for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Right behind me is uh, Shed Park. 
Uh, and at night, there's no lights behind me. The, 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 the park is very dark. Uh, and it is said that a lot of uh, prostitutes uh, in the 70s and 80s were murdered here. They also found uh, the body of that 11-year-old girl, uh, uh, Tabitha Porter, 19, I think it was 1999. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, again, I think this is the third time I'm saying goodbye. And uh, we finally found which Barney. Okay, so anyways, it's getting dark. There's a chicken pot pie with my name. I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna close it right now. Uh, I I see I got half half hour walk to my house. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I probably look like a hot mess. So I hope you enjoyed. See what I do for you guys for for my followers. I hope you enjoyed the video and my war wounds. I'm just gonna dress them when I get home. You can't see it, but it's, it's gonna be black and blue. Uh, anyways, uh, Santo Sanse. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Francis W. Luis. I'm signing out.